for you all. I am Egbert Eggington the Fourth, and I would like to egg stand my most exuberant welcome to each and every one of you. We are about to play a most exciting game. It's become quite the Easter tradition in the Eggington family. The rules are very simple. Momentarily, you're going to see dozens and dozens of Easter eggs. Those eggs will soon begin to disappear to reveal an image. As soon as you think you know egg exactly what the image is, stand up and egg exclaim your answer. Th that is, shout it out. Everyone got it? Very well. Let us begin. Remember, stand up and shout it out as soon as you know what the image is. Time's up! What could this be? It's a baby chick! Oh, that reminds me. Does anyone know how most farmers make their money? With eggs, because eggs shell! <laughs> oh, that never gets old. Anyway, moving on. What do you think this could be? Shout it out if you know! Time's up! What is it? It's a chocolate bunny! Have you ever heard why chickens make their own eggs? Because they're too egg expensive to buy! <laughs> oh my! Now my apologies. I have to stop. These egg jokes are cracking me up! <laughs> oh, okay. Get it together, Egbert. Uh, get it together. Now, what do you think this image is? Time's up! What is it? It's a baby bunny! Oh, how cute! Now, all egg jokes aside, do you know where all rabbits prefer to eat breakfast? At IHOP, of course! Uh, anywho, what do you think this could be? Time's up! What is it? It's an Easter basket! Now, I'm sure you all have heard about the basket case down at the hospital. Oh, you haven't? Oh, it's terrible. An egg fell on a hot stove and got totally scrambled. Now, what do you think this might be? Time's up. What is it? It's a jelly bean! Ah, I've been meaning to ask, what do you call a carton of eggs that has gone bad? Egg spired! Hmm, I wonder what we're looking at here. Time's up! What is it? It's a palm branch! I think just this once I shall waive my right to make a corny joke. Oh, wait, oops, never mind. Again, I am Egbert Eggington IV, wishing you all a very happy Easter. Great to see you. Welcome to our Bay Harbor Kids online service. Happy Easter! What an exciting day it is, right? And I know you've had a big Easter morning already with Easter baskets and chocolate bunnies, big or small, and jelly beans galore, right? And marshmallow peeps. Hope you've had some of my personal favorites, those Reese's peanut butter eggs. Those are to die for, right? But here we go. We have a great lesson in mind for you this morning, and we are talking about the biggest, the most amazing, and the most wonderful thing that ever happened in the history of the world. 
the fact that Jesus rose from the grave, right? That's where all that Easter stuff comes from. So today, I'd like you to experience the Easter story like we teach up here in Sunday school with our younger kids. We do the resurrection eggs. And if you'd like to participate, you can run and grab some supplies at home and do it with us, or you can just listen in. So, um, so feel free to pause the video if you wanna go make your own resurrection eggs and get the supplies together. I'll put those up on the screen here. You'll need six plastic eggs, all different colors, a little piece of bread, a little cross. It can be like made out of twigs or a little metal cross, or you can even make one out of paper, a uh, strip of cloth, or maybe even a little piece of cotton, a small rock or pebble, and a piece of candy. So if you put all of those in one of your eggs, and then uh, one egg will be empty, and then you'll also want your Bible to follow along, and you may want to pause it in between each egg so you can find the Bible verse that I'm going to read, but, um, or you can just watch and enjoy from from that standpoint. So whatever you choose to do, feel free to run and grab your supplies or we can just keep going. So we're gonna tell the Easter story through our resurrection eggs today. And our first egg is our green egg. And what's in the green egg? It's a piece of bread, right? So this egg comes from the story of the Passover on the Thursday before Easter. It's from Luke chapter 22 verses 14 through 15. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles took their places at the table. He said to them, I have really looked forward to eating this Passover meal with you. I wanted to do this before I suffer. I tell you, I will not eat the Passover meal again until it is celebrated in God's kingdom. So this is the time when Jesus shared his cup of juice and bread with the disciples. And that was the night before he was crucified. So that's on the Thursday before Easter. All right, our next egg is the purple egg. And what part of the story is that? It's our sad part of the story. It's a little cross inside the egg. All right, and that story comes from the book of John. So we'll turn to the Gospel of John, and that's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You guys remember the four Gospels, right? And it comes from verses, uh, the chapter of John, verse I'm sorry, chapter 19, verses 17 through 18. Jesus is nailed to a cross. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. He had to carry his own cross. He went out to a place called the Skull. In Aramaic language, it was called Golgotha. There they nailed Jesus to the cross. Two other men were crucified with him. One on, was on each side of him, and Jesus was in the middle. So that was Friday. Jesus was crucified on the cross, taking all of our mistakes, all of our sins upon himself, and he was crucified. All right, our next egg is the blue egg. So if you'll open your blue egg, you will find inside your blue egg, or whatever egg you have, the little strip of cloth is inside. And that is the next part of the story. Okay. And this part of the story comes from the same chapter of John, just further down. It's verse 40. And this is when Nicodemus and Joseph went to the tomb with Jesus' body. The two men took Jesus' body. They wrapped it in strips of linen cloth along with the spices. That was the way the Jews buried people's bodies. So that's our piece of cloth symbolizing that part of the story. And then our next egg is the one with the rock in it. So if you can find your egg with the rock... All right, let's read what part of the story that is. And that is coming from Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, which is our first gospel, right? Matthew, verse, chapter 27, verses 59 through 60. Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. That's from the last part of the story. He placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. And he rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb, and then he went away. So here we're talking about Joseph and how he put Jesus' body in his own tomb and sealed it with a big stone, a big rock. All right, then we're going to the next egg, and the next egg is the empty egg. And I wonder what part of the story that is. We're going to the Gospel of Luke again, and it is Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 3. It was very early in the morning on the first day of the week. The women took the spices they had prepared. Then they went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from it. When they entered the tomb, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And they were wondering about this. So the tomb is empty. All right, so there's the empty tomb, the empty egg. And then our last egg, Jesus is alive. 
And we have the sweet surprise of Easter. Here's where our candy comes from. The sweet surprise of Easter. And we go back to the Gospel of Matthew, the last chapter, chapter 28, verses 5 and 6. The angel said to the women, don't be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just like he said he would. Come and see the place where he was lying. Go quickly. Tell his disciples he has risen from the dead. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. And now I have told you. So Jesus is alive. And this is the most, most amazing story ever. Right here, just through the resurrection eggs. Just the, the basics of it. It is amazing. Jesus took all of our mistakes, all of our sins with him to the cross. Died for us so we could be right with God. And so it is the most glorious day that Jesus rose then from the dead and overcame death, proving that he is the Son of God. And he appeared to lots of people for 40 days after he rose from the grave. So it is a great day to celebrate. So stand up and sing and mean it with all your heart today. Praise Jesus and thank you for his sacrifice and his amazing victory over death. So let's stand up and sing. Hey, John, I've got a question. What is it, Brandon? No, no, I'm asking the question. Fine, say the question. Why do we paint Easter eggs? Because it's easier than wallpapering them. Oh! <laughs> hey, did you hear the one about the lady whose house was infested with Easter eggs? I did, but she's fine now. You don't say. Yeah, she called an exterminator. <laughs> Exterminate! Oh. <laughs> hey, that reminds me. How does the Easter Bunny stay so healthy? I'm guessing a steady diet of fresh greens and vegetables. That and exercise. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, speaking of the Easter Bunny, do you know how much he gets for every basket he makes? How much? Two points like everyone else. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. I think we're going to have to stop doing this pretty soon. Why, cause the yolks are so bad? Uh, ah. uh, no, I, 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 I'm getting dizzy. I'm, I, we're upside down. Oh. Uh. <sighs> I need air. <sighs> I need air. <sighs> I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta wipe off my glasses. <laughs> okay. Uh.
Welcome to the So and So Show. Happy Easter. I thought we were gonna say that together. I'm so sorry, I just got excited. I understand, it is very exciting. Yo! (laughs) Anywho, we're excited because it's time for our annual Easter egg hunt. John and Brandon's annual Easter egg hunt. That's what I said. Every year, we hide one Easter egg somewhere in the world for someone to find. Mm -hmm. Seems impossible, right? Yeah. (laughs) Well, it is. No one has ever found the egg we've hidden, so this year, We tried to find someone so cunning, Mm. so clever, Mm. and so gifted at locating hidden objects, there was no chance they would fail. So please welcome someone who finds stuff. Greetings and saturations. I think you mean salutations. No, I wish. I'm sweating like a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. It's hotter than the sun out here. Uh, Why don't you tell everyone who you are? Oh, uh, my name is Leonard Fortescue, and I am a professional metal detectorist. But presently, I am a professional egg hunter. Oh, did you did you solve our last clue, Leonard? Well, let's see here. We're four-sided and stand very tall perched in sand with no water at all. The tallest of us has been called great. Most think there's three, but there's really closer to 80 thereabouts. Kind of loses the rhyme a bit at the end. Poetry is hard. What do you think, Leonard? Where are you now? Four-sided, tall buildings in the sand? (laughs) I mean, where else would I be? (laughs) All right, yes, well done, Leonard. Did you find our next clue? <laughs> you bet your gumdrops I did. <laughs> Old Camilla here, she found it buried in the sand right over there. Hang on. <clears throat> I share a name with this very day. If you hope to find me, I'm far out of the way. I sit all alone in a watery bed. I have no body, so look for the Part of the body that typically sits on top. Why not just say the head? I didn't want to make it too easy. It's the world's biggest head of lettuce. <laughs> or maybe a giant wheel of head cheese. That's delicious. I think it's pretty straightforward. I, oh, and you better hurry. Your time's almost up. Mm-hmm. Oh, sweet petunias. I got to get out of here. Uh, once I find my camel. Hey, Billy Bob! Uh, this could take a while. I agree completely. Mm-hmm. That's why we're going to play a little game I call Egg Smash. In front of us is a basket of a dozen beautifully dyed Easter eggs. We will each take turns smashing an egg on our own heads. How is this a game? It's a game of chance, my friend. Nine of these eggs are filled with confetti. The other three are raw. Oh. The first person to crack two raw eggs on their head Loses. You got it? I got it. After you. Thanks so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> nice! Ow. Confetti and pain. Woo. Your Man. turn. Oh, great. What do you got? What do you got? Oh! oh! It's a party in your head. a party. Wow. <laughs> there we go, Red. Ooh. Whoa! What? I'm getting nervous. There's three yolks here. I know. <laughs> three and three and seven. What's it gonna be? Okay. Yeah. Oh! I think that's a strike one. How's that, that feel? That's great. That's all, right, great. all right, here we go. My turn. <laughs> oh! oh. <laughs> right, here we go. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> I think we have a winner. It's me. Boom! <laughs> I'm getting closer to your egg. I can almost taste it. I can taste it. I figured it out. I'm on Easter Island. <laughs> Look at that big head. Reminds me of my mama. You got there fast. Thank you. I did have a little problem in customs. They apparently don't like you to bring camels onto the island for some reason. Why did you bring... You know what, never mind. Did, did you find the last clue? Does a one-legged dog swim in a circle? <laughs> <Okay. clears throat> 
The last place to go is where you already know. Two sit here on their keister. Hurry up so we can celebrate Resurrection Day together. You've got egg on your face. Huh. <laughs> oh! Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> this is the oldest trick in the treasure hunting book. <laughs> Watch out, egg. I'm coming for you. <laughs> uh, that way. <laughs> it's Bible story time with Kellen. Happy Easter, guys. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter, Kellen. Today we're talking about the most amazing moment in history. Want to help me out? Yeah. You bet. Then bring on out the sound jars. Whoa! These jars contain sounds that will help tell the story. All you have to do is open the right jar at the right time. You think you can handle that? <laughs> yeah. Does this answer your question? <laughs> no, it does not. We're ready, Kellen. Perfect. Then here it is, the story of Easter. Jesus was the son of God. Jesus first came on the scene as a baby, born in Bethlehem. <laughs> Jesus grew up. He grew wiser and stronger. Now, as a man, he devoted his life to teaching and serving people. They came in droves to hear his words and see his miracles. Ooh. But <gasps> even though Jesus had done nothing wrong, many of the religious leaders wanted to get rid of him, so they had Jesus arrested. They tied him up, and he was taken to the high priest. Two of Jesus' disciples, Peter and John, followed at a distance, trying not to draw attention to themselves. But someone recognized Peter. You aren't one of Jesus' disciples, are you? Me? No, not me. Then someone else thought they recognized Peter. Aren't you one of Jesus' followers? No, you're mistaken. And then a third person. Haven't you been with Jesus? I'm telling you for the last time, I don't know him. Later, Jesus was taken to the Roman governor, Pilate, who decided, I, I find no basis for any charge against the man. But the religious leaders stirred up the angry crowd. Fearing a riot, Pilate handed Jesus over to the soldiers. They forced Jesus to drag the heavy beams of a wooden cross to the place where he would be crucified, the place called Golgotha, or the skull. There, they nailed Jesus to the cross. They raised the cross up, and Jesus hung there until he died. It is finished. That evening, Jesus' body was taken down from the cross and put into a cave-like tomb. A heavy, large stone was rolled over to block the entrance. It seemed like the end. All hope was lost. But the story wasn't over yet. Early Sunday morning, when it was still dark, a woman named Mary Magdalene came to the tomb. What she saw astonished her. That large, heavy stone that had blocked the tomb's entrance had been rolled away and Jesus' body was nowhere to be found. So Mary ran. She ran to tell Peter and John what she had discovered. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. Now it was their turn to run. They ran straight to the tomb, and Mary was right. The cloth used to wrap Jesus' body was still there, but Jesus, well, he was gone. They didn't understand what was happening, so they went back to where they were staying and left Mary there alone. She stood there and cried. But she had to see for herself one more time. So she peeked into the tomb and she saw two angels sitting where Jesus' body had been. They said, Why, Why are, you are you crying? They have taken my Lord away. I don't know where they have put him. Mary turned to find a man behind her. She thought it was the gardener. Sir, did you carry him away? Tell me where you put him, then I will go and get him. Mary. When he said her name, Mary recognized the man, 
it was Jesus. He was alive. Go to those who believe in me. Tell them I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary ran to deliver the news. I have seen the Lord. Jesus, God's son, died on a cross. Not because he had no choice. He chose to sacrifice himself to pay for our sins. He put us first in the most ultimate way. And on the third day, Jesus came back to life, proving that God is more powerful than death itself. And that is the story of Easter. Wow, I never get tired of hearing that story. Thanks, Kellen. And I never get tired of talking about the lengths God will go to to show how much he loves us. Happy Easter, Kellen. Happy Easter to you guys. Happy Easter, Brandon. Happy Easter, John. Yeah. Hey, reveal, reveal the question. question. Hey, what does Easter mean to you? Yeah. What do you love about Easter? How does it make you feel when you think about it? Talk about it together, and we'll see you next time. Wait, 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 on... wait. What about Leonard? Shouldn't we check in to see if he's found the hidden egg? Oh, yeah, I forgot about him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he'll find it. That's uh, what, it's yeah. what he does, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all for the so-and-so show. Happy, Happy Easter! Easter! Here, Norwegian bunny's eyes. <laughs> I'm gonna go make me an orange omelet. <laughs> oh, I got my egg. Jesus later appeared to his disciples many times, which proved that he had risen from the grave. It was real, it wasn't a prank, it wasn't a magic trick. He was alive. And once they finally understood that, they were so, so happy to see their friend, to see their beloved Jesus again. So Jesus put us first. Jesus took our sins and all of our mistakes to the cross to die for us so that we could be right with God. He put me first. He put you first. He put our families first. All of us who believe in him, he went to the cross for us. So let's, that's our bottom line. Let's say that together. Jesus put us first. Say it again. Jesus put us first. Jesus came to be our Savior. He rose from the dead and proved that he was the Son of God. And if we believe in him and trust in him, we can have a relationship with God that will last forever. So let's go ahead and go to God in prayer and thank him for this amazing Easter resurrection. Dear God, we simply don't have the words to say th how thankful we are for Jesus. When he died on the cross, he put us first. God, you are the creator of the universe, yet you still care about me and my life. You love everyone in this room. You loved us so much that you sent your only son to be our savior. And today we get to celebrate because Jesus is alive. We love you and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Happy Easter.